Good afternoon. So happy to see everybody. I see Helen out there. I see Linda. I see, that was like romper room. Remember that? I see Jim. I've gotten to know more and more people. It's great. I hope you all are having a good day, but if you're not, you came to the right place. Because here is where healing happens, and here's where uh, having a relationship with God continues. Our journeys continue on. And we look forward to hearing these words, thousands of years old, but still relevant this very day, just as the day that they, that they were written. So, happy Lent, everybody. I hope you're having a, a good or, or at least a, a productive Lent in your, in your Lenten journey. Looking forward to Easter. Today's presider is Father Fernando Molina Restrepo. I know you're going to enjoy that. And so there are no strangers among here, and I can't believe there are any strangers here, but just in case there are, stand up and turn to the person next to you. Say good morning or afternoon and tell them your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Welcome. Let us uh, pause for a second and invite the Lord to be with us, not only here in the church, but especially in our hearts. So let us ask the Lord to, in his mercy, forgive our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. 
Look kindly, Lord, we pray, on the de devotion of your people, that those who by self-denial are restrained in body may be the fruit of good works be renewed in mind through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Covered him, and then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles. Neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish? <clears throat> when God may, uh, who knows, <laughs> when God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. And speak. Our psalm for today can be found in your hymnals at number 783, number 783. Oh, 
joy of your salvation, Lord, and a willing spirit sustain within me. Open my lips, let my mouth proclaim your praise. Have mercy on me, Lord. Be merciful, O Lord. Have mercy on us. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Last year, when uh, I uh, began the conversations to implement this Mass for healing on a Wednesday, the first Wednesday of the month, um, the idea was to do the 7 p.m. Mass bilingual, and, and that was it. But then, <clears throat> as it began, some of you had told me that uh, you or some of you do not uh, drive at night. And so, basically last month, we, we began anointing the people also in this mass. I guess it's not going to be two, I mean one mass, but two masses. This one and the 7 p.m. with that, everybody will have a chance to go and receive the anointing of the sick if they needed to. So I am going to uh, do that in some few minutes. I just want for all of us to uh, humble ourselves in the presence of the Lord and ask the Lord for the graces that we need. Also ask the Lord to use me as an instrument of his healing. So if you repeat after me, Say, 
send your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Renew, renew us all. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we ask you in your mercy to send you graces, especially for those who are going to receive the sacrament of anointing of the, anointing of the sick. We humbly ask you in your goodness to help those who are struggling with pain and suffering. We ask this because you are our Lord and our Savior. You said that when two or more people will gather together in your name, you will be with us. Confident in your promise, we ask you then, Lord, to put your hand upon those who are going to receive this sacrament. Through Christ our Lord.
God be the grace of the Holy Spirit, with the Lord who brings you constantly the same feeling and raise you up.
For the preparation of the gifts we have, O Lord, hear my prayer, and you'll just listen to this and sing it back. brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Let us pray. We offer to you, O Lord, what you had given to be dedicated to your name, that just as for our benefit you make these gifts a sacrament, so you may let them become for us an eternal remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and proclaim your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John Harmeyer, our Archbishop, his auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. Remember Veronica, Genito, Sylvia, Derko, and Dr. William Jarrett, for whom we offer this Eucharist. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Thomas Aquinas, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory be are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer one another now a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be Amen. 
Let us pray. Watch over your people, Lord, and in your kindness cleanse them from all sins. For if evil has no dominion over them, no trial can do them harm. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Those who are bringing communion for the sick, please come forward. Go in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and bring him to those who couldn't be with us today. Assure them of our prayers. And I bless them and you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. 
the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.